and on the Friday the 13th of October 1939 when um, the incident happened when the torpedoing happened mm. what was the day like you know before it led up to that leading up to the uh, torpedoing well we hadn't long come back from uh, patrolling the Fair Isle Passage and uh, you've never seen such rough seas and, and so many men being sick and guns out of action, securing chains broken and a gun six inch battery smashing backwards and forwards and we thought we were going to founder but we were sent back unable to keep up with the fleet and uh, so we were very relieved, we just cleaned ship on that day and you know we were sort of settling down to a nice quiet routine scuba flow and um, one or two of us had a run ashore there, were, there was a picket boat there, a liberty boat that night and um, it was a perfectly normal day but a day of of relief really thank Christ that's over because it, it was such a storm so you'd been cleaning the ship and normal routine? Yes, we'd been cleaning up from a pretty foul state we were in. All our Kali floats and all that stuff smashed up in a great heap on the forecastle, and it, some of them were able to be used, you know, driftwood floated around and people got hold of them, but there was nothing complete. Now, at night, when the uh, attack by U-47 happened, the, the German U-boat yeah. uh, that uh, managed to get into Scapa Flow and yeah. release its torpedoes. In, in your recollection, what happened and, um, and what, what actually happened to you? Well, as far as I was concerned, I was in my, my hammock with my chum Dick Augie. <laughs> and um, we heard a noise. It, it really wasn't much more than somebody dropping a doby bucket on the deck above you, you know, because it was uh, quite forward. Just like a thud? Yeah, just a thud. Mm. But the, sh the ship actually shook, shuddered, and she was a pretty big ship, 29,000 tons, and uh, that took a bit of shaking, so it was quite an explosion. And... Um, we lay there for a moment, we thought, what the hell is that? And then we had, um, the officers were still performing in the wardroom. They hadn't all finished. And uh, the, the pipe went, um, uh, magazine parties, take temperatures magazines. And so a number of officers who were still in their mess kit came down past us to go down below to the magazines. And of course that was fatal. It, he never came back, and um, but we weren't to know that, neither were they. And uh, then, after a suitable pause, I don't know how long it was, but not not much longer than it takes to reload your torpedoes, you know. Then there was a complete salvo down the side, and we knew that it was serious. But up until that moment, Nobody really took it seriously. Most people got back in their hammocks and cuddled down and thought, oh well, it's a, a C2 bottle exploded or something. The, the anchor chain rang out to a clench, as they call it. I don't know what that is, but um, that's what happened. And you could hear it go out. And that, um, but old Dick and I got back into our hammocks, but we soon got out when the final salvo went down the side. And fortunately we were on the port side and the salvo was all down on the starboard side. Uh, regrettably, the boys mess deck, all that lot, all smashed to bits. Mm. And so now that you know that the ship is obviously going to sink or yeah. going to be destroyed, you had to make an escape out of your hammock. And I had to make an escape. Um, all the lights went out, which made it a bit difficult. But I got, somehow or other, found myself in, in the sergeant's mess netting. 
and uh, which was a sort of steel barrier behind which they put their um, hammocks during the day. And I knew that when I was there, I was opposite the mess deck, the tables. And I knew that the tables were connected to the ship side. And as the ship was turning over, they were still hooked in on the side. And I was able to get forward onto a table and climb up it. And I also knew there was a port at the end. A portal. So I went straight through the port. I was a thin man in those days. <laughs> I went through the port and stood on the ship side as if it was a deck. She was right on her side. There was a terrible cordite flash while I was in the hammock netting. And the cordite flash went right down the ship and incinerated anything it touched. And it missed me, I, like a live thing. A live flame went by and um, it didn't touch me. But she hadn't sunk by that time, she was yeah. still floating. But, still um, floating, yeah, yeah, yeah half down. Mm. All the uh, stuff falling off, all the big superstructure that is, a lot of it is loose, as you know, just its own weight keeps it in. And, um, and then I had the very unpleasant experience of deciding what to do, whether to run down over the barnacles, you know, with the heel, the keel coming up, and in the dark, and you didn't quite know where you were, and uh, leap in the dark, literally, which I did, and I hit the water. So I must have been a fair leap. And um, mm. from there, I uh, swam away from the ship as fast as I could. I mean, everybody has this idea, you're gonna be sucked down, you know. The seas around Scapa Flow in the Orkneys in August when this footage was taken are cold and bleak. So imagine the conditions in the early hours of the morning on the 14th of October, 1939, having just escaped from your hammock. No life jacket, no warm clothing, and no life rafts. <laughs>